This is J.P. Froome from uh, King Coplock in New Hampshire Regional Coplock. This is the meeting with uh, the Chief of Police in, uh, in Marlboro. Um, now, now, but if you approach me and say that you wanted, say that you wanted to work Main Street, Marlboro, that I was going to go out and patrol and stop cars on Mar for whatever reason, mm -hmm. whether it's for uninspected or for speeding or any of the things that we look for out there to make it a safer place for everybody. Um, if you approached me and said, do you mind if I videotape you? I'd say, absolutely not. You could go up and down. The thing that concerns me is if somebody was to come up on me, like come up behind the cruiser, I, you know, and it's getting dark or whatever, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know what you have in your hands for my safety. Well, with me, I actually covered that. I, I have press markers with, with, you know, reflectors here. I have a reflector on my back. Yeah. Um, I usually have that bright shirt that you saw, the big, big cop lock, the one I do with the DUI checkpoints, and I also have this marker strobe right here. But I think what I'm trying to say in a nice way, JP, is that I, I think in a couple of years it's like, I think you kind of surprise the officer, so that puts them on the defensive mm -hmm. right away, um, and I think that initially any of us would do that just because we don't know who you are. I understand that you identify yourself and everything, but... Um, we don't know. And if you just said, hey, do you mind if I did it? I'd say, I, I would welcome it. It wouldn't be a problem for well, me. The, well, the, thi the thing is, the, the, you know all the court cases probably, you know, you can probably recite them better than I can because police have been getting hammered with lawsuits and losing, um, especially when it comes to videotaping police. And now, and now this, the, the Supreme Court says we can secretly videotape police without their knowledge. Um, the, but I guess the only thing I was saying is you were talking about the officers, the response. Yeah. And maybe not answer your question, whatever. But my thing is, and I don't think any of my people would have an, a, a problem with it, um, I welcome it. And, and like I said, a lot of times it probably would help us, you know? Well, the, I, I think I've seen a change between the first, the first part of me doing this till now. Um, the, I don't usually have an issue with the videotaping. Um, it's usually when they're approached on what the law is, especially when it comes to the eighth article of the New Hampshire State Constitution. I throw that out a lot because when you're a public official, you have to keep yourself open and it says you have to be responsive at all times to the public. And state police, I noticed they shut right down. When you, when you have a video, uh, video um, device going and they see that it's going, even if you clearly identify it's even you know, during the day of coming towards them from, they shut right down. They don't say anything. They shut right down. Um, I don't know if they're ordered to do that because the, the have you have you ever asked the state one of the one of like one of the commanders from the troops or any of I, high, higher ranking officials be, before state Maslin police? left? I used to have a very good rapport with Maslin, um, especially with the DUI checkpoints he did in Walpole. I had awesome conversations with him there, and I I literally could just email him, and he would respond immediately i'm sad that he's gone because i don't trust joe um i know some of the things he i'm did sorry that you feel that because I, I i get along with him very well because well, he's, he's a he's a fellow police officer and he has to respond you know to chiefs in this area a, a lot so you work with him you don't you you haven't seen the um the side of not being a police officer and have to deal with it he he took a took a camera from a from a free state not too long ago illegally um and it's basically theft, and the state police turned it back over. But you know, well, I would have to know more of the, the details about that. But have you ever gone over and just sat down and talked to him like you are with me today? No, not yet. I've been trying to get a hold of him about some some of the things. Uh, you know, the issue with Ray that night. Um, I don't appreciate the state police targeting the drivers and saying, "If you want me to, if you want him to leave, I'll make him leave." She knows she can't do that. I, so I don't know why she would say that. Um, you can't make a videographer leave. It's it's a violation of the First Amendment, free press, and the public's right to know. I'm like, I'm covered by a ton. It's not like I was threatening her. And whether she dislikes my my demeanor or not, I'm, I'm ticked off that. Well, my, and I... At that type um, I think of behavior. the best thing to do is just try to reach out to the lieutenant and maybe go over and... Uh, oh, I have. And, I, and I fairly... I, I, I want to give, like, the holiday... Because I know some people get, like when January comes, they want to take their, their vacation time or whatever and just relax from the holidays and stuff like that. And I know football football season's in, so that's a good yeah. time to take your vacation. Up, yeah. um, I, and the Patriots are in it first round, so 
um, Saturday they're playing. So I want to give it like a week and then I'll have to go there in person with the camera and knock on the door and see if I can talk to them or not. But um, I did leave two separate messages on uh, a couple of things that I'm, uh, I'm concerned with, especially with that, because I'm not the only one that does this. Um, there's, there's cop lockers all over the state. Now, how, I, many, I mean, how, how many are there here in the Keene area? Um, Steve, maybe seven. They all live right in Keene or? Um, four live in Keene. The other one, uh, I think, used to stay during the weekends. Um, he's more of a free coaster now, so he's probably like, you know, Portsmouth area. Okay. Yeah, and, and um, that's what prompted me to start the New Hampshire Regional Cop Block chapter so we can go elsewhere. Um, we just did something in Littleton just fairly recently with the troop commander up there running over a girl, and there was like this huge cover up um, because he was friends with the chief of police in Lisbon. Um, and found out that they were buddy buddy, and his son works in the same building with the guy, and they shouldn't have been, the, you know, doing stuff. That that was huge. that was a huge story. Um, so to to take a story like that and put it on Keen Cop Lock, it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't jive with Keen Cop Lock. So we had to make a an extra chapter just to cover the rest of the areas of New Hampshire. Because now, I mean, if you go to a DUI checkpoint in Manchester, it's amazing. There's like 50 protesters out there. Going against the DUI checkpoint is the uh, craziest thing I've ever seen. But getting back to what we can really just no, no. With the, I'm sorry to cut you off. With your officers, how many police do you have here? Just three. There's three of us. And you, you included. Yes. So there's two. Three, three full-time officers. Okay. Yeah. Three, three full-time, and and you're included in that. So yes, basically. I'm a, technically I'm, I I'm what's called a working chief. So. Oh, wow. I manage the police department, and I also am responsible for answering calls, working investigations. I do it all. You you twenty four hours. Uh, we take we take call. So it's emergency calls, but you're not yeah, open so like, during the day. I mean, like business. Three people, and you do your math, one hundred sixty eight hours. Yeah, tough. yeah, yeah. No, but we I do get take it. a lot of call. I get it. And we work very well with our many towns. So you don't get any sleep then. <laughs> Sometimes I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Um, now, did, do you did you look into this officer going, you know, driving erratically out of Keene in, into Marlboro? I have, and, and you probably dealt with it already. Or, or the thing about it is it? the thing the, the looking back at logs and talking to the officers. Nobody was on duty for Marlboro at that time. Were yeah. they dropping off somebody or doing a, a citizen's assist or anything? We didn't have anybody on duty. We had state New Hampshire State Police was taking the call for us. Doesn't make any sense. So I looked at it. I looked at the pulled the officers' logs, and um, checked with dispatch. And that's one of the things I was curious. You say you check with dispatch. Um, did they tell you that? An officer was on on. Um, I didn't go duty. into it. I just said I wanted to make a motor vehicle complaint with Marlboro Police, and they said, uh, "Let me give you a, our sergeant. He's he's on a call right now." Went into the voicemail, and that's when I went through the other, you know, the jump in the other hoops. And I have the my call log says it was like one thirty ish a.m. So you don't think you don't think it was a Dublin cop, and I was mistaken. I have I have no idea. I mean. Um, there's a number of departments that have dark cars in this area, but um, I'll do, I'll looking, do. looking from the Marlboro side of it, I've only checked on Marlboro, um, and I wouldn't think to look at Dublin. The other cars are silver. They're lighter in color. So well, What other ones would be dark? Would it be Jaffrey? Jaffrey's not really dark. Well, either. Jaffrey, if I'm not mistaken, are black and white. And, um, and Chesterfield's the other direction. The Chesterfield has dark cars, but they would. There's no reason for it. The only reason a Chesterfield car would be going that direction would be to go to the and House the of prison, Corrections. Yeah. You know, you do have. That's, that's a drop-off point for all the local agencies in Cheshire County. So, but I know, in talking to my guys, looking at logs, pulling. I mean, I've pulled every which way I can, and. Um, well, for, for the for the benefit of the doubt, what I'll do is I'll I'll call, the four stations in question. And. It, um, and I'll do that right away. I'll do that tomorrow. Um, I'm at the court all morning tomorrow because I usually try to get there Thursdays and Fridays. Every every week I'm there. I actually know the 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 chief of uh, what's that town on the other side. He's got a limp. He's the pro he's the prosecutor for his town. Limp. He's got two two 
uh, two stars on his collar. He's kind of, kind of not heavy set, but get it, getting there. Can't be puzzled on that one. Got his name, man. And I forgot the town. My memory stinks. Limp. I don't know of anybody that specific, you know, has a it stands right out. Well, he talks to me every time I'm there. Um, oh, Surrey, Surrey, the Surrey chief. Oh, he, well, you know they don't have a police department anymore. Um, but you're talking about doing court security? Yeah. That would be Gerald Clark. Yeah. And then you have the other chief that's the prosecutor, probably getting mixed up with the town of Surrey from, uh, what's that town going towards Massachusetts and, and Fitzwilliam between there and there? Troy? Troy, yeah, yeah. the Troy chief. Yeah, that's yeah, that, Chief Ellis. Yeah. yeah, Ellis talks to me like daily and he, he just, he thinks the whole cop block thing is funny. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of, it's the Troy. So what I'll do is I'll call those three to find out who who was there because I know that it was a cruiser and marked. And um, going by the color. Yeah, there's I a was, number. There's a number almost, of cars. I was in almost the certain it was Marlboro. I was almost certain Marlboro. Maybe I just guessed that because it was heading that direction. Well, like I said, I checked. Uh, I checked the guys' logs. You know what I can do? I could check the the arrest logs for the, from the from the jail. And see who brought anybody in between twelve and two, right? And I could find out that way. And they were just in a rush. Now you're room. able to. I don't. I don't. I don't. Never look at it from your side, but the the jail will let you look at that. Um, if you call as press, yeah, yeah, they they usually pretty good at opening opening that information. I mean, it, they it takes a day, and then the lady emails you. Okay. Um, from the sheriff's department or whatever. But yeah, I can find I can find out that way, and then if that happens, I'll come back and I'll retract this and write a statement that I looked into it, blah blah blah, and I'll file a complaint with somebody else. Okay. All right. Is that fair enough? And I'll do that tomorrow. So, this is your signature here, right? Yep. Okay. And I'll do that tomorrow. Now I haven't had the the pleasure of cop locking any of your officers yet. <laughs> do they do they know? You guys, you have you have a piece on Marlboro. Do I really? I don't know if it's you or it's somebody else. This happened several years ago, where we had a cruiser parked out and on at the old court. Yep. Where it was on Washington Street, and we had a car parked at the parking meter. Okay. And somebody came over from the square, and I don't remember who it was. And Probably Robin Hood, maybe. Um, you know, I, I now that you mentioned, I maybe I have it mixed up with free, the the uh, free keen. But Robin Hood is with Potter freaking. But anyhow, whoever it was, they came over and they put a note, they wrote a note on the hood of the car, left it under the office, under the um, windshield wiper, and um, you know the lights flashing. Mm -hmm. And um, we are exempt from paying the parking meters. Government would be paying government. Oh. Have a government plate. Oh. I know you probably disagree with that, but uh, that just don't create extra rights. It doesn't give. But that has it, that's where you're on. A, you have to understand. Our viewpoint is that you're on official business, and um, so we're paying it. But so we pay so it what, you're what, what you're doing is government paying government. It's just like toll booths. Why why should we pay the toll booth? Now when I'm off duty, I do. I'm not exempt when I'm off duty. Same thing with I go to Keene. Um, I have to pay the meter. I'm not a, just because I'm a police officer. That's where you're. That's when it's abusing the badge. That's when you go and you park, and I've never seen this happen, but. Using examples where the park manager says, "Oh, Chris, I'm in this area, and I won't write you a ticket." That's abusing your power. So, but putting the cruiser in front of the court at the park manager, you know, sometimes we have to bring prisoners. We have to park, and we got to get well. Parking the parking there stinks. The 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 key here. Well, you know what? I have to bad. be honest with you. When I saw when I saw the new courthouse go in, and I saw the the parking deck going in, I said, "That's going to solve all the problems." We're not allowed to park in there. Do you know that? The judges can. Apparently, the employees in that building can, but we can't. We're not allowed to park in there. So when I saw that going in, my first impression was, wow, I won't have to search for a parking place anymore. I wonder if that's actually, media-wise, if that's actually worth looking into. Because the, every time I'm there, there's like seven, eight spots open. And, and then you look at the public parking, and it, nine of them are taken up by cruisers. And people got to park all the way down the street, and they're, if they're late for court, they get they get a bench warrant, and 
you know, you know because what? because it's a it's, sa- I have to admit it's a tough thing because I'll, I'll actually if, if you go to, if you go to court and you got to pay the meter and you're in court, that is a tough that is a tough I have to admit that's a tough situation. And I always, whenever I, I'm fair to my people when they go to court, I tell them. Are you the pr- you prosecute? Are you the prosecutor? I, the only time I step in is if my prosecutor is not available, like she was sick or she's. Who, a- who, who is it? Who's your prosecutor? Who is Martha Jake. Martha Jake. Jakes. It's Jakes. J a c q u e s. And and she's a prosecutor for the state or. She's a she's our she's our um, our prosecutor for our police department. Okay. She does she does other police departments too. Okay. But um, what what other police departments? She does, um, and I'm I'm. She does Harrisville, Nelson, and I'm not sure who else she does. Also, she probably works out of the Jaffe Court a lot. No, she works out of um, Harrisville, Nelson. She works out of Keene. Because okay. all, ta- all, the, all the towns I just listed are out of Ke- uh, go to Keene. Martha J. I never heard of her. Martha J. She's not the one with the cane, is it? Glasses? Yes. Oh, okay. She, be- was, she was struck by a car in the crosswalk in Concord. That's why she's, yeah. she has a lot. I actually have something really good to say about her because I call her the guardian every time I see her at the court. You can actually ask her about it. You know, the cop law guy that calls you the guardian? She laughs every time. She stood up and refused to prosecute a gentleman there because he was not being represented. And the judge wanted to go ahead, um, Ed Burke wanted to go ahead with, with I think it was a cause hearing, a probable cause hearing or something like that. She wouldn't do any of it because the, the lawyer wasn't there. She goes, I'm not doing it. And then there was a problem and she actually dismissed it. She says, well, fine, I'm, I'm just going to dismiss the case then. She's very fair. Yeah, that was unbelievable. I've never seen a prosecutor do that before. I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, I just never knew her knew her name. Do Do you have any any more questions for Coplock or, or me? No, I just like a like I originally started. I, I have. There would be no defensive end of me if you just came up and said, "You mind if I go up and down Main Street tonight while you're stopping cars?" <laughs> and I would welcome it. It's not a problem. What the, happens the, is well, if the you thing, came today with all the different things with groups like ISIS and things, yeah. we don't know. You well, come with, up, it's dark, you have something like this camera that you have here in your hand. I mean, you look at the size of it, it's in your hand, or however you, you, you know, um, are displaying it. Unless I, I can really see it up close, I don't know. There's so, there's so many things today to disguise as... as, as um, well, the, th- the, the, the thing is, the... The, uh, the amount of cases of police being afraid of a situation like that is nowhere near the amount of cases where cops opened up and they ended up shooting innocent people. And we're seeing it a lot. And it's because of that perception alone with, oh, he could be ISIS. That perception shouldn't no, happen No, I'm not enough. saying that. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. With all, I'm using that as an example. But as far as cop law goes, we, we have this right. And we don't have to ask. But... Since, you know, I, I want a good rapport with police because I want to be able to see, you know, a police officer, if they do something wrong, I could just go to you and be like, hey, listen, this, da, 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 and, you know, keep that good rapport. Um, and I have multiple good rapports with Keen PD, don't have any really bad interactions, uh, maybe, and I target a couple because I think they just, they shouldn't wear a badge. Um, and, and I've been open about who they are. Um, Jason Short should definitely get a new job. Matt Griffin should get a new job. Those people, the, the way they act and treat people on the street is just ho- absolutely horrible. People like Christopher Simons, Kevin Gina, even Jennifer Ramey, some of those people, you can actually have a decent conversation, a human conversation with them, no, actually, no Chris, issue at Chris all. Chris started at the Marlboro Police Department years ago. Oh, he was here? He was here. Oh, no That's kidding. where he started his career. He's a Patriots fan, so no, normally if we, I, like, I like Chris, he's a good guy. Yeah, we every time I bump into him, we're just talking about the Pats, and he's asking me about my kids or whatever. Um, and, and there's some that I don't trust, but you know, you know, and some that I, I think should retire early. Um, and, and that those are all opinionated from things that I've seen, and and I caught blocked the life out of out of the city of Keene. Um, it was like a goal of mine. I don't, I don't agree with how much money they make off of college kids with the open containers. And I really do believe if you look at their crime mapping, 
of uh, when they beef up uh, the presence in the college neighborhoods. This is even before Pumpkin Fest. The crime rate in the city actually goes up when you localize all their attention in what they call the black box, which is Davis Street, Wilson Street, and Blake Street, and yep. Winchester. It's that box of houses where there's just all college houses, and now you have those new houses on the other side of Marlboro Street, on the other side of the bank, New Hampshire Bank, Walpole, whatever, um, and they localize all their attention there. And all of a sudden, the B&E rates go up. Even the domestic violence rate goes up. Uh, stealing copper from people's basements, that goes up. Uh, damage to property goes up everywhere else um, when they localize all their attention. They make something, it was a ridiculous number. It was like a year ago we did a 91A request. It came back to like $35,000 a month they were making off the college kids alone with the noise complaints. And now the noise complaints went from 11 o'clock last year. Now this new semester and on, it's at 10 o'clock. You can't tell me that you're going to try to keep 20 and 19 year old kids quiet past 10 o'clock on a Friday night. You're not going to do it. It's, it is the stupidest thing I've ever heard about. Let of my me ask life. you something. You're a parent now, right? I am. And you've got kids, you're trying to go to bed, and you're right in the middle of all that. I'm nocturnal. I, the big yeah, kids, but, the but big that's... kids, the, the, older, the older kids, we try to get to bed early, but the littles can stay up as long as they want because they don't have to go to school in the morning. We, we have free range children within reason. Um, but you're not, you're not going to make, a, you know, it's listed as the number one party school in the state. And that's what they're trying to end because of this whole pumpkin fest mess. Um, and I, and I believe, and a lot of other people believe, people believe that the police instigated that whole thing from beginning to end. I was there. I've seen it. I, I've seen it. If you look at videos of mine from the pumpkin fest of 2013 versus 2014, the presence of police was way different. Before the riot even started, these guys were already wearing helmets and Kevlar vests. Before it even started. So it's almost like they knew it was going to happen. 2013, nowhere near that type of presence whatsoever. And there was just as many people there and parties going on. So I, I don't, you know, that's my opinion. Um, and, and as far as perceptions goes, I think cop law can be used in two different ways. Reporting police corruption. Um, trying to put a stop to the victimless stuff. And I, I already know where cops come from with stopping people for no taillights, and they, they, they literally think they're doing, and doing something because people are unsafe. It's, it, it's you know, all revenue- interesting thing that you it, bring up. It's and, all revenue-based stuff, and, and, and that's just a fact. Well, you see, it's, it's, it's revenue-based. Uh, um, very little of anything that we write does the town get. Yeah, but they put we money into your general fund, fund that comes from the state funding that comes from the traffic stops. And your, the town, and, the and, town your AC, and your ACEALA accreditation um, grants and all that stuff also come from the funding that, that uh, come from the traffic stops. But we have no pressure to do that. We don't have no pressure to generate revenue. Nobody, nobody puts pressure on, the, on my police department to do that. Oh, New Hampshire's hidden it well. Um, I, I know it doesn't come from you guys, but the laws are made to generate revenue. Um, it's like if you if you well, watch. I'm just trying to figure where you're, what you're basing this on. I, I don't, I don't see that. Vi victimless crimes shouldn't be enforced, and that's probably one of the the biggest things I agree with the free staters with. I don't think they should be enforced at all. I don't think someone's right to free travel should be impeded because they don't have a plate light being out. What the cops are doing is they want to perceive a stop to look for other stuff because they automatically have a suspicion that something else is going on. That's an interesting thing that you bring up because looking back um, on one of your videos, you know, you mentioned about the drug epidemic that we have in mm -hmm. this area. And this is, you said in your uh, stop with Trooper Ray that uh, this area is one of the worst in the state. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it may seem trivial to you, but having things like a taillight out or whatever, and then we stumble across that there's drugs in the vehicle. What about how many people do you stop that you don't find? Literally, it's already a law of average that one out of four Americans either well, does let me, illegal let me ask drugs you, or... Let me ask you this. How do you, how do you see police um, Stop shutting down on drug use and, and, and the potential for we had we had uh, we've had a couple overdoses here in the last last two weeks. That, the, that new batch of heroin's bad. It is in, bad. In fact, Chief Costa 
actually called um, LRN FM, uh, Ian Freeman from Free Talk Live and Free Keen to put out a word on Free Keen about the, the he's very, Hollywood. He's very proactive in trying to do the right thing. The, the Hollywood batch of uh, heroin. And that, that got posted fairly recently. We're talking days ago. Um, he called, and I actually commended um, Brian for doing that. Um, I, I'm, I'm from a drug fam, drug and alcohol family. I lost my father to a cocaine overdose, um, and, and there's like very little members of my family left um, around out of seven or eight men in my family, and all of it has to do with the alcohol and drugs. My brother is having a slew of health problems because of his drug use in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, so I'm, I'm not, a, not naive to, to any of it at all. And I'm from two bad drug cities, especially the era where I was living there. Um, I think it's better to do community policing and meet the addicts on a one-on-one -on -one basis without the force of, a, of arrest. I think the, 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 uh, the finances of the state, again, absolutely diminished and crushed by throwing addicts in jail. And they say 75 to, to uh, 60, 60 to 75 percent of people in jail are just addicts and, and all on small possession charges. That's not what's going to end it. This fake drug war and the whole mask that, that there's this big drug war going on that the, the, the federal government is making billions off of um, is, is an absolute farce and it's hurting communities here. Um, and, and that goes way back. I mean, I can show you hundreds of documentaries on why that's truthful. Now, as far as small towns like this, can you I ask really, you, a question? You, you can't, just let me finish my point. Um, you can't really go to, you know, in a place like this where it's just so desolate and not generalized in a local area. Like, like in Keene, you could literally go to a street and find the four or five houses that are doing it. I mean, because heroin affects everybody around you. It, it diminishes the whole entire environment and, and the people around you. So it kind of like spreads like, like a little disease. Um, it's one of the many, many things I don't agree with the Free State Project and Free State is with is that drugs is a victimless crime. Well, th something like heroin is killing people. It most certainly is uh, victimless, and I spoke against it many, many times. But as far as the police go, Stopping people for taillights out and stuff like that with the perception that they're going to catch something is a bad reason to stop people. Um, I don't think they're going to fight the drug war just by stopping people like that. Even if you end up stumbling across one out of 180 cars you end up stopping and you find like eight bricks of heroin in the, in the back and it's like a gold mine, that's not going to stop the flow. If Even it, with those arrests, and the information you get from those arrests goes to the drug task force. We're talking millions of dollars of, of, of overtime, detectives, stuff like that. It doesn't defeat so what, the so cause. What's your, so what's your answer? Community. You've got to use the community against, against drugs, just like they did in Brockton, like they did in Taunton, Massachusetts, like they did in Attleboro, Massachusetts, like they did in Brighton, uh, out in, Brighton in Boston back in 1998, um, like they did in Brooklyn, New York, and Harlem. Back in you know 2000, where the community programs came to the street, and all of a sudden the crime rate. As soon as they took the police out of the figure, the crime rate went down, the drug rate went down. It, it, I mean, you can't even get an apartment for less than fourteen hundred bucks a month in Brooklyn now. Look, look, look how great it is. Um, and I, I'm estimating and exaggerating that, but. It's it's a very very high rented place. Uh, everybody wants to move to Brooklyn all of a sudden, um, but it has to it has to be done on, on a one on one basis. Now if it, if you look at if you look at Jason Short, okay, Jason Short will approach somebody that he knows used to be a drug dealer or a user. He talks down to him. He goes, "Do you have anything on you? Let me see those pockets." And then I'll give you the other contrary. You see Timothy Pelequin go up to that same person. Hey, how you doing? Did you go to your meetings this week? Did, 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 you, did you end up going to the Serenity Center for your meetings? You know, I know it's court ordered. I'm not going to say nothing. You know, did you go to your meetings? Because you don't look so good. Do you need me to take you to the ER or blah, blah, blah? That's the type of community policing that we need. Not, I'm going to get you, throw you in jail, and spend taxpayer money just so you can spend a few days in jail, get charged, get prosecuted with all the money we put into that, and then you're going to be back out on the street putting needles in your arm all over again. Well, we recently had a situation where someone was on, well, they are on heroin, 
and um, we held some charges. We held them back. That's great. We held them back, and that was at the family's request. And when you were talking about victimless crime, it's not a victimless crime because um, things were being stole from the family home. Oh, yeah. And yeah, they were being, I know. They were being, you know, sold and, and then giving them to other people for the supply and types of things like that. And, um, you know, we sat down and, and worked with that person, and that person had an opportunity to go to a treatment program. And my wife um, works with somebody that, that, and that friend's family, they can't get in a program. This person had a chance to get into a program. Mm -hmm. There's lack of money to, to help some of these people. So we were waiting for this person to get in the program. And the meanwhile, they keep taking, and finally the, the family's been dealing with this for a couple of years. They didn't want to call on their own, um, their own child. And, and then finally, the only way we could get them to help, to get them to stop, was to whack them. It, it, it had to. You know, they felt they, it was driving them nuts. But and, then, and then they did, and then they, the safety of their own home when they're not home and these people are working hard. Yeah, I, get, I get it. I, I, mean, I get it. Some, you, sometimes can you, can you imagine you, you have, you have a, a son or a daughter that's, say, 18 years old and you can't go to work or you can't do your cop block because you don't know what's going to happen in your home? Your, your opinion, your opinion, if they took to prosecute a case, you know, roughly it's 25 grand. And that's if they don't appeal and take it to court, take it to trial. It's $25,000. If they took each addict and dropped $25,000 on the amount of arrests they take on addicts and put it into programs where there is beds and there is a seat and there is a place to put them, you know, with, with, poli with police help but not with excessive force with, you know, caging them but getting them help, do you, do you find that to be like a much, much better way to, way to go or to pr prosecute them and put them in jail so they could just mix with the same people they've been using with and well, go back into you, the community. When you find out all the ins and outs of all these different situations, unless you are like really know f from start to finish all the ins and outs, it's hard for me to pass judgment on it without looking, sitting down and looking at all the expenses. Where does the money come from? You know, how many people you're dealing with? It, it's, it's a complicated thing. Don't take a plea is one of the free state of things that I do. Um, and, and I get labeled a free state. Or I'm married to one. She's full blown an FSP mover. She moved here because of FSP. Um, she's an FSP early mover. And, and that's one of the things I do that I agree with. The don't take a plea is, is an awesome way to show the state, you know, you're putting the money in the wrong place, especially with the victimless type of stuff. Um, and and it's, that, that story is huge. That that story you show, showed shared was absolutely amazing because it, people it's need hard, to know. It's heartbreaking for law enforcement because we know our people. Well, you found a need to try to help them first, we and did. that's that's the type of police we need. That and, that's the and, type and, of police. And the we amount need. of work that went into it, knowing there was a lot of hours that went into that to to you know track down the property, um, you know to put all that together, and. It's heartbreaking when you put that much effort into it and you want that person to get straightened out and it continues to happen and they won't turn. And it's, excuse me just a second. Yep. The emergency call? No, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at what it is. Oh, zero, it's, all, zero. it's all zeros. It's weird. Yeah, Very it's some kind, of, some kind of crap. <laughs> So, did did you see a spike in uh, in metal metal thievery in, in your town the past two years, like copper and well, aluminum? The, when, the, 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 when the metals were at an all time high, there was a period of time where I I got pretty pretty close to scrap it. I mean, and it seems like it's died down, and that's because the prices are not so high for all the different it's, metals. It's low on silver too. Yeah. Silver and gold is so right now. Too. It's like, and and that and, that, and that's that happens with us with a lot of things you know we have we'll have spikes in in uh, seasonal homes or vacant homes that are um they get stripped oh, and you know what right now knock on wood we're not having that problem because they're not paying them the prices for the metals mm -hmm. um and of course when people are in heroin they go around and they do burglaries and things like the that. catalytic converters are pretty big in the city yeah 
and people start ripping those things out. Yeah, that's an expensive warning out for the for whoever's car it is because I think they're around 300, 150 to 300. It depends. If you if you have a Ford, Fords usually have two, and then you have to replace the whole manifold behind it because wow. they ripped the whole thing. So it's expensive. We're looking at over a thousand dollars just to because someone stole your uh, and it's of course it's a part that's not covered under insurance. All right, man. Well, thank, thanks for visiting and uh, no take, taking this time. That, that's absolutely huge. And out of courtesy, if I have a cop block here, or I ever see a, a traffic stop, especially at night, I'll make sure I identify myself. Just come up and say, yeah. hey, you know, uh, who, it, whoever it is. It, I don't care if it's you or it's, it's one of the other people that you mentioned. Yeah. And just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to be in the area tonight. Um, I didn't want you to be startled. I didn't want you to... to yeah. I don't think I have any of the keen ones, but we have keen warning flyers. Um, I forgot to bring those. Um, that specifically we have our YouTube channel. You already know what that is, and the uh, the website keencoplock.org. Uh, New Hampshire regional coplocks only have on Facebook now, but this is coplock.org in the description. You can probably share with your officers uh, of what we do and who we are, and we and I, and I'll do my best not to antagonize unless I actually see see something I need to target. I know I can get a little overbearing, but that's my personality. The other thing, the other thing I don't know if you thought about, I, I, would, I would assume that you've thought about it, but, you know, our job is to protect people. And if you come up and you say you get into it with, um, like what happened in Wilton or Chesterfield, and, you know, the, the F word starts flying and quit, turn that thing off and whatever, I would just caution you to be careful because it's, it's dangerous for us. And when we stop someone, you may not know what we're stopping that person for. Well, that and if I stop, I have somebody that's been involved in a road rage incident, you know, that like they've been trying to push each other off the road. And just a, as a caution to you, um, you know, I, I think, and I think that's one of the things that, that kind of bothers me about it. I have no problem with you taping me. Matter of fact, I think I told you last night, thank you for taping me. It, yeah. it doesn't bother well, it's, me. It's the law. We, we have it doesn't right bother to, me. Yeah. I mean, it, um, the, the situation. But if you're if you're, if you're, you're engaged the, in that, you're thinking about the mat the mat uh, um. Yeah, I know which situation you're talking. You're talking about like up in Chesterfield, but it was Keen cops. No, it was it was it's clearly a Chesterfield cruiser. Not 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 with the the back and forth swearing with the light in my face. No, I don't. I think that was a. I think I'm pretty sure it was a daytime stop. Um, but I know out in Wilton. Uh, there was two officers in the car, and um, the guy was he was using some pretty foul language back towards you, and you kept telling him, "I'm not filming you. I'm filming filming the cruiser." But he was getting a little heated there. They're, they're just doing their job. That's I call that Stockholm syndrome. They, they love to be ruled by police, but that's just a joke among cop blocks. <laughs> but anyhow, what I'm saying is, is like if I was to stop two cars, they were involved in a road rage incident, you know. Um, I don't usually interact. My question, I, 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 this is a question I'd like to ask you, is if I stopped two cars in a road and one of them jumped me, would you continue filming or would you help me? I, I would probably help. I, I would hope so. I would most certainly help. I would in, hope fact, so. in fact, one of the cops that I follow frequently um, around the college neighborhood, Kevin Pouillard, um, I don't know if you know him. I know the name. I haven't. I haven't. I don't um, know the Kevin Pouillard is usually it's mostly on the bike during the summer. It's either him or Matt Griffin. And uh, he actually says, yeah, I want him to follow him around because it, it could, you know, it could help me out. In fact, I've been subpoenaed a few times for my, uh, for my um, videos. In fact, one police officer was, uh, one traffic stop I had, um, she was highly intoxicated on pills and stuff. She barely walked. They arrested her and she literally filed a massive harassment complaint saying that when they took her out of the car they were feeling her upper dress and feeling her boobs and whatever and that when they subpoenaed my videos the video actually put that right to rest because none that's of that what, that's, happened. What, that's why i say it you know it they, helps, they were like us. they're like you know i hated cop lock up until that point but you saved my career with that camera going um and 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 some police can't stand it um because especially because the free state is a bit just they're antagonistic, and I try to not to, I try not to videotape civilians at all. It's just police I'm concentrate on, and and I don't know if you saw the 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 trooper Ray one, but I ended up knowing the the passenger, and then it went into a bad conversation. Was that Christine? 
Yeah. Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, the the passenger side. They, she they, said she she knew you from yeah, Brickyard. Yep, because yep. I do homeless outreach during the during the summer. Yep. On Saturdays, I do homeless outreach. Um, and I knew her through 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 that because she was there with some friends one day. Um, and I've only seen that just this past year or so, where the drivers are actually starting to get upset about the the videotaping. Well, I was, they feel I, like their I, privacy. I saw is being that. Infringed. I saw that. It's, it's like almost everyone I watched. I don't well, know. I, I think there's only three. Is there? That it must be the three that I watched. But um, they seem they were getting seemed like they were getting agitated. And I remember you telling them that I'm not filming you. I'm filming the police car. Uh, and I don't officer. know if you saw the the Gladys the Gladys Johnson one the the state rep. She was upset at me when she got pulled over in Keene. Well, I can understand why. Yeah, she's like, you have no video. And, and then as soon as I found out who she was, I literally, it was, a, it was a decent video. I wasn't belligerent at all. It was a very, very good video. In fact, they had a big segment on LRNFM about it because I caught some flack um, saying I, I was very disrespectful to her. And I was like, if you've seen any of my videos, that was actually the, the most nicest one out of all of them. Um, but it, you know, some, sometimes I get a, a little hot-headed because I don't like the, the, I'm gonna stomp on your fingers type of attitude, and and I I become the author the authority in the conversation immediately when I sense that, um. And and I tried to tell them right off the bat as soon as they get combative and they're starting to put their hand that I, I read their demeanor really well. I'm like, listen, I'm I'm from carplot.org. You can get back in your cruiser. You don't have to be. You don't have to get out of your car. Relax. I'm I'm clearly marked. Um, and and that's one of the things that police use as as an excuse. Oh, why did you run? Well, I didn't know who you were. You were coming after me. You, you came in my, in, slammed down my door and you started running after me. I didn't know who you were. But I got police stuff all over me. Well, I can use that same excuse as a cop lock. I got cop lock stuff and press stuff all over me. If the cop doesn't know who I am then, I could say the same thing about a police officer. Um, because you don't have reflective gear a lot of times. Only the state police I see have really wear the coats at night sometimes. Oh, we have, it's like today I did, I had to, um help the, uh, one of the utility companies run lines. They've got a raincoat and it's all reflective and yeah. it's the, I call it the line. But when, in the summer when you're like walking around or helping Keno, I very rarely see reflective vests. I didn't even see state police this year where, like I, I, I saw. What, what, what are you talking about that they weren't wearing it? At nighttime, walking around the college neighborhood in, in the middle of the dock. We hours in the morning not wearing anything reflective whatsoever. Uh, I mean, pure black. I have videos on it, and I've even I've even asked them, "How come you guys aren't wearing reflective gear?" They don't they don't respond. That's actually one of the first complaints I made. When they don't was, respond at all. Um, state police don't usually. I think they're told not to respond to car blockers and free staters. Hmm. Um, I'm not I'm not sure that that's an assumption. I'm guessing. Well, we're we're supposed to wear our reflective vest whenever we're in the road. Directing traffic, yeah. working accidents. I mean, obviously, if I come up with an accident, people are injured, and they don't grab that vest. I'm actively working on a is, patient. Is, is that a town policy or a state policy? I think or it's, an OSHA or I would say it's a federal policy. Probably when OSHA. You're, yeah. When you when you know, if you come up on something, something's going on, and you don't have a chance to get your vest on. Once things settle down, we're supposed to put our vest on. That is that is a rule. We okay. can be fined for not doing it. Okay. So, uh, but as far as walking around neighborhoods and stuff. There's different thoughts to that, you know. If if you're coming up on something that's in progress, and you don't want to give away your location, it could be a, an officer safety thing. If you got all that reflect, just like with badges and things like that, mm -hmm. anything shiny, it could give your location away and get you hurt. On Wilson Street, the end the end of Wilson Street connecting to Davis is very very dark and near that corner. I mean, it's pitch black. The uh, state trooper and a keen cop were walking side by side, and they were coming around the corner. And the guy forgot to put his headlights on, coming off of Wilson, and take taking a right onto Davis Street to go to Main Street, towards where you know Domino's is. And I mean, coming the farms is like right in front of you. He almost took them both right out. And I'm like, you guys should be wearing something. Actually, that was one of the first complaints I had to DeRusso because he just got promoted to lieutenant at that time. I'm like, listen, you need to tell these guys. 
to where the, I thought they were going to get killed. And I don't want to see cops get hurt. As much as I don't like a lot of the policies and things that they do, I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Like Matt Griffin one day, and he's my nemesis. Um, his lapel mic fell off and got wrapped up in his spoke. And he actually flipped over the bike and he nailed the ground. And I was the first one that called, you know, you need to get someone here because he just flipped out. He was chasing somebody, of course. Um, and I felt really bad, even though I dislike him highly. <laughs> I don't want to see people well, I'm glad that you have. I'm glad you have what we were talking about earlier. I'm glad you have that in there. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely would do something. If I saw you getting jumped, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to, even, even if I get hurt in the process, I, I definitely help you out because I don't like seeing people get hurt. That's just, uh, I don't, that doesn't need to happen. But before my lady starts freaking out, I need to uh, let her know this is done. Because she's, she got me some beef fried rice and it's probably getting cold, she's probably getting ticked. Where'd you get that from? What? Where'd you, where'd you get I that I think from? she went to King Garden.